In this video, I'm going to be ranking the top 64 creatures in ARC, Survival Evolved and Ascended in a bracket style ranking. I've never done this before, so if you guys do like it, make sure to leave a like and let me know if you want to see more of this type of video. But yeah, let's get into it. As you can see, this is what the beginning bracket looks like. It's 64 of the best art creatures. I've tried picking some of the like top most popular ones, so I'm sorry if I couldn't get all of them because I could only put 64 in here. Also, this bracket's going to be from a PvE perspective. I thought I'd just mention that before we start, but anyway, let's get started. The first matchup is between the Maywing and the Megatherium. Now, both of these are really good creatures. The Megatherium is really strong, especially with the killer insect buff thing. But at the end of the day, the Maywing is just way more useful as it can basically fly around or glide around at Mach 10. And it's one of the most useful travel mounts in PvE, as well as it has like the ability to hold like babies in its pouch as well and helps with imprinting. So I think the Maywing is going to have to take this one. And the next one is the Pyromane versus the Mammoth. Now this is an interesting one. The Mammoth is extremely useful, especially after the TLC update because it can gather a ton of wood as well as a ton of thatch and it gets tons of berries as well like it's one of the best berry gatherers in the game and you can also use it for pvp as well even though this is a pve oriented list and the pyromane i think is more of a pvp oriented creature even though it is really strong it can be used for stuff like caves and stuff i think the mammoth one is probably more useful when it comes to pve so it's gonna win this round and next we have the Magmasaur versus the Carno. I think it's pretty obvious who's going to win this one. I mean, the Carno is pretty decent. It can deal some decent damage, and it's alright early game, especially with the bleed attack, but the Magmasaur is just phenomenal. I mean, it's way stronger than the Carno in pretty much every regard, but it can also gather metal, and it's one of the top metal harvesters in the entire game, so this one's easily beating out the Carno. After that is the Iguanodon versus the Direwolf. This one is, I think, a closer pick. The Iguanodon is really great. This thing has unlimited stamina if you're on all four legs, and it's also really strong when you're on two legs and you fight. It gathers a decent amount of berries, and it can turn, like, berries into seeds as well. The Direwolf is also really strong. It, you can't put a saddle on it, though, but it does have a pack bonus, and it can deal a lot of damage and can be used for caves as well as it can, like, sniff out artifacts and stuff. But I think the Iguanodon is just a bit better. It's way better early game, and the ability to basically just have unlimited stamina is great, in my opinion. Next up is the Oasis Sword versus Deodon, which I gotta say is quite the matchup, but... Well, first, the Daedon, I mean, it's been one of the most useful creatures in the game since it was added, mainly because it can do its heal ability, which is insanely useful. It's one of the very few creatures in Ark that actually has a heal ability. You just give it a bunch of food and it heals everything up. And then there's the new Oasisaur in Ark Ascended, which uh, can grow, like, resources on its back. It can fly around. It pool, like, heals you. You could put crops on it, and it gives them like basically a bone or it fertilizes the crops as well uh, it brings your dead creatures back to life that's a, that's a big one so it's kind of a hard one i mean it sounds obvious that the oasis Sword should win but at the same time the oasis Sword is a really in-game tame and i feel like it's not as overpowered as it was originally like theorized to be when they were announcing it and i honestly think the daedon might be more useful as the healing mode is always useful and you definitely use a daedon a lot more than an oasis or i would say so i think the daedon is going to end up winning this thing after that we have the desmodus versus the dunkleostusis this one i mean the desmodus is probably one of the best flyers added in the last few years as it's really quick it can do the dive ability uh, it can like cling on walls and stuff it's got pretty good stats overall i mean it's a, just a really great flyer honestly it's been one of my favorites as well as it has the sanguine elixirs which basically if you drink one of these things when you're near something you're taming it gives it 30 percent to its taming bar which is insanely useful especially if you're taming something that's kind of annoying to tame and then there's the dunkleostusis which is one of the better underwater creatures as it can harvest all kinds of stuff like stone metal crystal and oil but i think the desmodus is just a phenomenal creature and definitely deserves to win the next matchup we have is the Raptor vs. Rhino Natha, and I think it's pretty obvious which one's going to win. I mean, the Raptor is pretty decent early game. It's pretty quick, and it can deal some decent damage, but I mean, the Rhino Natha is a phenomenal creature. The only thing that's bad about it, I'd say, is it's kind of hard to get, and it's super late game, but once you do have it, it is great. It's extremely fast. It can pick up things like vaults and stuff and move them around. It can also swim underwater, which is like one of the only flyers that can do that. It's just got so much stuff it can do, and it's got some really great stats overall. It's one of the best flyers in the game, so it's going to beat out the Raptor for sure. And then we have the Shastasaurus versus Megalodon. The new Shastasaurus, it's pretty 
good i mean it has the submarine saddle which is really unique and it's really cool but the thing is it's super late game the saddle is at level 100 and it takes element to make so you have to kill the bosses to get it which i feel like by the time you're that late in the game this is kind of just like a gimmick or something you just wouldn't use that often there's probably some uses for it in pve that maybe you want to do some underwater base or something but it's kind of not very useful or at least it is but only in certain situations the megalodon on the other hand is one i've never really been a huge fan of but recently within the past like a year maybe six months or so i've come around and i've realized that the megalodon is actually pretty good as it's really strong it has a bleed attack as well which you can use to kill stuff i've even used it to kill like alpha moses and stuff like that just with the bleed attack and you can get packs of these things and just tear through creatures if you have a pack of them because they get a pack bonus so i think the megalodon is going to win this one it just becomes way more useful as well as it's pretty easy to tame so you can use it early game and you could still even use it late game with packs after that we have the quetzal versus the therizinosaur the quetzal used to be one of the best flyers in the game but now it's not as useful as it's kind of difficult to tame and the rg kind of outshines it in pretty much every way it does have the platform saddle which is pretty cool but it's really slow it does have a lot of weight though so i guess that's decent but on the other hand the therizinosaur is literally one of the best creatures in the game it's one of the best harvesting creatures you can use it to get wood you can use it to get thatch berries fiber hide pretty much anything you need chitin as well and not only that it's also a great boss fighting creature as it's really strong and you can use it to fight things like the dragon so it's got two extremely super good uses that it's good at and it's definitely going to win this round next up is the utyrannus versus the wyvern the Utyrannus is one of the most useful creatures for boss fights. It's pretty much essential as it has the Courage Roar, which gives your creatures a resistance buff and a damage buff. But it's, that's pretty much the only use I have for it in PvE anyway. Well, the Wyverns are useful in all sorts of ways. First of all, they're really quick. They got great weight and stamina. And then there's so many different variations of them you can get in the Breath Attacks. They're really strong and can kill just about anything. Like you're pretty much unkillable with the Wyvern. Unless you do something stupid like attack a Giga or Titanosaur, but the Wyverns are just phenomenal. They're one of the best creatures in the game, so they're going to have to win this one. After that, we have the Velanosaur versus the Sabertooth. I think it's kind of obvious which one's going to win here. The Velanosaur is really strong. It has the needles that it can shoot out of its face, which do a pretty good amount of damage, and you can use these for all sorts of things like orbital supply drops and on extinction and different things like that. Of course, and the Saber is also pretty decent as well. I mean, you can use it for caves. It gets a ton of Chiatin. And then it's got Saddle too, so it has armor in the caves and like Dire Wolves. But uh, I think the Velanosaur is just better. This just has a lot more uses and it's a lot stronger. So it's definitely going to win this one. Next up is the Shadow Man versus the Andrew Sarkis. The Shadow Man is notoriously one of the most overpowered creatures in the entire game. As it is insanely strong, it has like the dash teleport thing. It can stun things. It can swim underwater really great as well. It's really great for boss fights and it's great for travel too because you can jump up and go insanely high. And on the other hand, the Andrew Sarkis is good. It's pretty good actually, but compared to the Shadow Man, it's not that great at all. I mean, it has the turret saddle, which is cool, but. I feel like the Shadow Man just does everything the Andrew Sargus does, but better. So it's easily going to win. After that, we have the Manic Armor versus the Bloodstalker. And honestly, this is probably like one of the hardest matchups yet, as these are both really great creatures. The Manic Armor can run insanely fast. It can jump and dash forward. And it also has the Ice Breath, which you can use to freeze things in place and kill things too. It's really great. And then there's the Bloodstalker, which you can swing around like Spider-Man and go insanely fast. You can also use tools while you're riding it as well. Uh, they're both really great, and I feel like it's personal preference, but I like the Bloodstalker a little bit more, so I'm going to have this one win. The Bloodstalker, to me, I think it's just a little bit more useful. You can go really fast, especially with the nerfs on the Manic Armor, where its stamina is insanely low. The Bloodstalker, you can actually like swing around really fast. You can also climb up walls, too, and stuff, and you can like basically like shoot your webs out and then pull stuff in as well i think this is just a great creature but it just barely beats that out i still think the manic armor is good but the bloodstalker is gonna win and then we have the baryonyx versus the new fossil Suchis. the baryonyx is a great creature overall i mean it's a theropod you can ride on it's really strong you can do like that tail whip thing as well as it swims underwater and has unlimited oxygen so you can use it in caves and stuff but it's also pretty great on land too as it can jump and it's pretty agile and strong overall and can fit in caves too and the fasolosuchus is 
pretty strong and pretty decent as well the only problem i have with it is it's a really late game creature and i feel like it should be more of a mid to early game maybe not early game but definitely more mid game than how late game it is because you need rockets and stuff to get it out or i guess just grenades but it's still quite difficult to tame it is pretty good though once you get it and it gets a ton of flint as well but i think the berry definitely beats out the facilisuchus after that is the snow owl versus the rock golem the Snow Owl has got to be one of my favorite flyers in the entire game, as it's kind of like an RG, but it's way faster and can dive, which of course I love flyers that have the dive ability, I think everyone does. And it also has the ability to freeze things, which can heal them, so you can use that to heal all kinds of different stuff, which is my favorite way of doing it as well. And then it has the X-Ray, or Heat Vision, not X-Ray. But yeah, that versus the Rock Golem, which, I mean, the Rock Golem is really cool, and it's insanely strong as well it has the resistance but the thing is in pve it just doesn't really have too much uses it's more of a pvp creature so i think the snow owl is easily winning this one and then we have the giga versus the parasaur um i think we know which one's winning this one but the giga is insanely strong there's so much damage and the parasaur is honestly it's good early game and it's got some good abilities like the call and stuff but compared to the giga i mean the giga is obviously winning now we're on to the right side and we have the Ankylosaurus versus the Basilo. These are both really great creatures, the Anki being one of the best harvesting creatures mainly for metal as it gets a ton of it, but there are a few other creatures that get metal like the Magmasaur and the Strider, but this one still is really great and it's the easiest to get. And then there's the Basilo, which I think is the best underwater creature. I mean, it's pretty much immune to jellyfish things and the eels, as well as it's really strong. And if you go to the surface, it will heal extremely fast, and it's easily the best water creature. But I think the Anki is going to have to win, as metal's like the most useful resource in the game, and being able to get a ton of it is super useful. After that is the Argentavis versus Ceratosaurus. Now, this one's not really that fair, as the Argentavis is like the best creature one of the best creatures in the entire game as it's like the most useful flyer it has weight reductions on pretty much every resource that you need like metal and all kinds of other stuff as well as it's got really great weight and phenomenal stamina as well so you can go around as well as it can defend itself too it can pick up different creatures it's like an all-around just really useful creature and then there's the ceratosaurus which is the new creature that was added pretty recently with the arcade mod and it's good. I mean, it has the healing stuff it can do. But I feel like it's more PvP oriented, and the RG definitely beats it out, though. Next up is the Deinonychus versus the Pteranodon. I think this one's a really close one. The Deinonychus, it's a great creature. You can use it for caving. It's really quick. You can use it for travel if you want, because it can also climb cliffs. But it also has a bleed attack, which makes it really great for boss fights as it's the only creature that can deal bleed attacks to boss fights so it's one of the best boss fighting creatures and then you have the pteranodon which is one of the best flyers in the game mainly because of just how easy it is to get it's most people's starter flyer and it's really quick it's one of the fastest flyers in the game it doesn't really have that great stamina or weight though which kind of brings it down it's not as useful late game which is why i think the Denonicus is going to win it just has so many uses and it's really great at all of them after that, we have the Mosasaur versus the Kartra. This one's interesting because it's basically like one of the strongest water creatures versus one of the strongest land creatures. The Mosasaur is pretty good. I don't think it's the best water creature though as it can still get stung by jellyfish and stuff like that. And also the turning radius isn't that great on it. It is just really strong though, but it has the weakness with the jellyfish. The Karchar is just a really great powerhouse of a creature you could pretty much kill anything with it and it kind of just ramps up damage the more you use it it's great for orbital supply drops and stuff or you can use it for like king titan or titan fights and stuff like that i think the car chart definitely has more uses as i'd rather use like a basil or something underwater so the car chart is gonna win this next one is the bronto versus nothing i'm pretty sure it said there was 64 in total but for some reason there's an empty slot here and i have no idea why so the bronto is gonna win this one i guess but after that is the gas bags versus the equus. This is quite a weird matchup, but the gas bags is known to be super useful because it has an insanely high weight, so you can carry tons of resources as well as it can kind of like fart and fly. It's a weird creature for sure. And then there's the equus, which is a horse. It's pretty good if you can tame one early game and it has like a mortar and pestle saddle. You can also use the lasso to kind of latch onto stuff and move them. I think this one's really close, but I think late game, lots of people use the gas bags for the weight of it. And I think I'm going to have it beat it out just for that. And next is Dire Bear versus Rock Drake. 
Now, I think it's pretty obvious who's gonna win this one. I mean, the Dire Bear is good. You can use it to get honey and it's really strong, but the Rock Drake is just awesome. It's like the main creature of aberration. You can use it on other maps too, but it like glides around and it's super fun to fly around on as well as it's got really good weight and stamina as well. So you can move like resources and then you can attack stuff too as it can defend itself. It can go invisible as well. It's got a tech saddle as well, just a bonus. It's got so much good, it's definitely gonna win. And after that is the Tuso versus the Astrocetus. The Tuso is easily one of the strongest underwater creatures in the entire game. And I'd probably use this or a Basilo if I were doing anything underwater related. You pretty much can't get killed on the back of this thing unless you're getting killed, attacked by something like an Alpha or something, I don't know. And then there's the Space Whale, which is really great on PvP, at least I would assume it is. I've heard it's pretty good, but on PvE, it doesn't really have much of a use. And you also have to defeat the master controller to unlock the saddle for it so i think this one's not really that useful it's also kind of hard to tame so i think the two so is easily going to beat this one next is the strider versus the beaver now i don't really think this one's fair as the strider can harvest for every resource in the game extremely effectively and can also put them in it's like mobile what is it called the like saddle bag things and the beaver just harvests wood now it harvests a lot of wood and it's really good at it and you can get it on a bunch of different maps but the strider is just better than the beaver though because you could get way more wood with the strider and you can get way more of every other resource in the game so the strider is just gonna have to win i guess and then we have the griffin versus the dodicarus so you have the best or one of the best flyers in the entire game it has the dive ability and it was the first one to have that dive ability and it's got some pretty good stats just overall it's also got that dive if you know how to do it right you can deal a ton of damage with it and then there's the dodicarus which is like the best stone harvester in the entire game i mean maybe other than the text rider but the stone the dodicarus is super useful especially because it's on like all maps so you can use this thing to harvest a ton of stone but i think the griffin just is a little bit better this one's hard but i think the griffin's gonna win mainly because it's a phenomenal flyer and i think it has more uses than the dodicarus especially considering that there's other creatures that can harvest stone as well and then we have the giga raptor versus the trike the giga raptor is new to arc ascended and it's pretty great i haven't actually had much time to use it in game but going off of just what other people have said and just how good it actually is, I think it might have to take it here. I mean, the trike is a really great early game one as it can harvest tons of berries, and that's pretty much all it's good for. I mean, it is good at getting berries, but the Gigantoraptor has the ability to basically hold, like, babies, and then it can imprint on them, and then it also gives them a permanent imprint buff when the Giga Raptor's around. It can also, like, find babies in the wild and imprint on them, so it's really great it's also just really strong really fast and can like do a little flap thing as well i guess that's a kind of a bonus but yeah i think the giga raptor is gonna win this one and then we have the dodo versus the spino um yeah i think you guys know who's winning this one i mean you, there's the dodo and then there's the spinosaurus uh yeah spino's winning Anyway, we have the Thyla versus the Ferox, and the Thyla has got to be one of the best creatures in the game. I mean, it's one of the most fan favorites. You can use it for so much. It's one of the best travel mounts, and it can pretty much scale any surface, as well as that as a bleed attack, which you can use to take down a Titanosaur, as well as it's just really strong, does a ton of damage, and it's just great. And then there's the Ferox, which I've never really been a huge fan of, mainly because it's just all right at killing stuff it's just got like it's decently strong i mean you could use it to like jump around and climb stuff but every time you want to use it you have to feed it element which is kind of expensive and i don't want to have to do that every single time so i don't really find the ferox to be the greatest and i think the phyla easily beats it after that is the astrodelphus versus the sarco quite an interesting matchup the astrodelphus is really great the only problem is that you have to make a tech saddle for it in order to use it once you do get it it's one of the best travel mounts in the game it literally flies insanely fast it's one of the fastest flyers i'd say might even be the fastest honestly and you can use it underwater as well so you can use it underwater and land as well as it can like shoot lasers as well it's super useful in pve as well as there's the sarco which is really great i mean it goes super fast underwater which I think is what a lot of people use it for, kind of early game. You can swim super fast underwater with it. But I think the Astrodelphus is going to beat this one, as once you get the Astrodelphus, it's one of the best and fastest ways to get around. Next up is the Carcanos versus the Reaper. Both of these are Aberration picks, and both of them are really good. I like using the Carcanos to go get Rock Drake eggs, because I think it's like the best option. 
but it's really strong you can deal a ton of damage you can also jump super high which you can use to travel around the map and it's super useful on aberration as well i mean it's even good on other maps being able to jump around makes travel really easy you can also pick up creatures and check them across the map which is pretty dope and then there's the reaper which is like one of the coolest theropods in the entire game if you can even call it that it's like an alien looking theropod that does lots of damage it can jump super high so it's actually pretty good for travel as well unlike a lot of other theropods and it's got the little tail spin attack i think the reaper is going to have to win this one but it's really close and then the rex versus the margosaurus which is the last of these first round of the bracket i guess you'd say the rex i mean it's one of the most iconic dinosaurs ever and it's one of the most useful in arc as it's really strong you can use it for meat runs and it's one of the best boss fighting creatures all around and then there's the amargosaurus which has these spikes you can kind of shoot out but it's really only useful in pvp and on pve it's not that useful also it's really hard to tame so i think the rex is easily going to beat the amargosaurus and the first matchup of the second round is the maywing versus the mammoth and the Maywing, I mean, it's insanely fast. It's probably one of the best travel mounts in the game. And of course, it has all the imprinting abilities. And then you have the Mammoth, which is great for harvesting certain resources. But I think the Maywing is going to have to take this one, as it's just like one of the best travel mounts in the game. Next is the Magmasaur versus the Iguanodon. And I think the Magmasaur is easily going to win this one, mainly because it can gather a ton of metal. And it's also really strong as well. The Iguanodon is more of an early game tame, so... I think the magma sword definitely deserves to win this one then we have the daedon versus the desmodus we got the daedon which is a great healer and then the desmodus which has got to be one of my favorite flyers especially in more recent times especially like we mentioned it has the sanguine elixirs it can fly really fast and it can dive and it's got pretty good stats i think this one is definitely more useful than the daedon so i think it's gonna win and after that we have the Rhinonatha versus the Megalodon. Both of these I think are really useful in their own right. The Rhinonatha is only really useful late game, mainly because you can only get it late game, which is the only knocker I have against it. It's really great and it can swim underwater. And then you have the Megalodon, which is great kind of like in that early mid game and you can even use that late game. And it's just a lot of uses. I mean, it does tons of damage. Like I mentioned, the pack bonus and stuff. But I think the Rhino Natha just has so many crazy abilities that it has. It's become one of the best flyers recently. Just because of the ability to like, pick up stuff and move them. Swim underwater and land on stuff. I mean, it's just crazy good. So I think the Rhino Natha is still going to win this one. This next one was a really hard one for me to choose. We got the Wyvern, which has got to be my favorite flyer in the game. And of course, it has all the different breath attacks. It's really strong. You can pick up things with it. It can also gather thatch too, which I kind of forgot to mention earlier. And it's overall just a phenomenal flyer. Like I said, my personal favorite. Then there's the Therizinosaur, which is like one of the greatest harvesting creatures in the game. It can harvest all kinds of different resources. And it's super good for boss fights. But I think I'm going to have to put it to the Wyvern, mainly because I find myself using the Wyvern a lot more. And with recent stuff like the Tech Strider and stuff, making other harvesting creatures not as useful i think the wyvern definitely should win this one and then we have the velanosaur versus the shadow man i think this one's pretty obvious who's gonna win i mean it's the shadow man the shadow man has been one of the most overpowered creatures in the game since it was added and it's way stronger in pretty much every way than the velanosaur so it's gonna win and then we have another close matchup this one's between the bloodstalker and the baryonyx and of course like i said this one is close but at the same time the bloodstalker has got to be one of the best as it's basically a spider you can fling around like spider-man i mean it's really useful especially on maps like genesis one where you can't even use flyers and stuff but i think it might be a little bit more useful than the baryonyx because the baryonyx even though it is useful is pretty much only useful in underwaters situations as well as in caves as well which both are really good uses don't get me wrong but i think the bloodstalker can be used in a lot more different situations as well the bloodstalker can also like walk on water too so that is another plus then we have the snow owl versus the giga these ones are quite different i mean i guess the other one was ones are quite different too but the snow owl is a, a great flyer like i said kind of like the rg can swoop down and do its dive it has the freeze ability which heals things with the vision and i think just because of all the abilities it has it beats out the giga even though the giga is one of the strongest creatures in the game in pve it doesn't have as much use as something like a flyer would so i think the snow owl is going to beat it out 
And onto the other side, we have the Ankylosaurus versus the Argentavis, which is kind of funny because these creatures are technically known to be used together, so it's kind of crazy that they're both going up against each other, but we have the Ankylosaurus, which is the best metal gatherer in the game, or at least was, and then we have the Argentavis, which is like one of the best flyers. I feel like I've said that for a lot of the flyers on here. Maybe I should stop saying that. I mean, they're all really good, but the Argentavis, I gotta say, is definitely like the best because, I mean, you have the weight reductions on everything. It's pretty easy to get. You can get it like pretty much mid game and it's really strong as well. So I think the Argentavis has more uses, especially with the Anki not as being as good at harvesting metal as some other things added recently, like the Magmasaur and Strider. So the Argentavis is definitely gonna win. After that, I think is another really close matchup. It's the Deinonychus versus the Karchar. The Deinonychus, of course, being really great for caving, travel, and boss fights. And then there's the Karchar, which is used for like orbital supply drops, and meat runs, and stuff. I think it's more useful for PvP, but I still think it's really good in PvE. And I honestly think it should win because I feel like I'd find myself using the Karchar a bit more than I would the Denonicus. With the Denonicus, I mean, you don't have to use it for boss fights or caves. There's tons of other creatures you can use for both of those. But the Karchar, it's really just between the Karchar and Giga, so... And the Karchar, of course, is really great in that role, so I think it's gonna win. And then we have the Gas Bags versus the Bronto. Both of them are pretty good in their own rights, and one thing that's common about both of them is they both have an insane amount of weight. The Bronto is probably the best berry gatherer, in my opinion, mainly because of the area of effect it has. With this tail attack, you can get so much berries, and with that weight, it makes it to where you can hold a bunch, which of course, you need narco berries to, for taming a bunch of different stuff in the game, which is super useful. Then there's the gas bag, which has a ton of weight. Honestly, I don't find myself using the gas bags as much. The Bronto is also more common on other maps that you can use to get berries, and I think it should win for that. Then we have the Rock Drake versus the Tuso, which is kind of a weird matchup, and both of these have reasons why they could win. One thing I would say about the Rock Drake is it's probably most useful on Aberration, and on other maps it's not as useful, but I still think it can be good, especially with the dive if you know how to use it right. You can get around the maps, and... It does some pretty decent damage as well, you can defend yourself with it. And then there's the Tuso, which is really strong underwater, but I feel like I'd rather use a Basilo or something, but I guess Rock Drakes, I would rather use other Flyers as well, so I guess you could say that for both of them. I think the Rock Drake should win though, mainly because I find myself on land a lot more than I do underwater, so just the Rock Drake is going to be more useful in that regard. Then we have the Strider versus the Griffin. I mean, the Strider, I've been talking about it a ton in this video every time we mention a harvesting creature because, I mean, it really just changed the game when it was added because the harvesting module on it is so overpowered. It literally harvests everything in the game, pretty much making everything else redundant once you get it. And with the Saddlebags module thing, it gives it a weight reduction and you can, like, automatically transmit it to a dedicated storage. So this thing is really, really good. And then we have the Griffin, which is another great flyer, a fan favorite flyer. But I honestly think that the harvesting module is just so good on the Strider that it has to win over the Griffin. After that is the Spino versus the Giga Raptor, and this one's a little bit of a tough one. I mean, the Giga Raptor has been one of the best creatures added recently because of its abilities to like imprint on babies and all that stuff. And then there's the Spino, which I feel like has kind of been overshadowed by other creatures like the Rex because it's just weaker than it in pretty much every regard. I mean, there's, it has the water buff, which makes it better, but in all other instances, the Rex is better. And the Giga Raptor just has a lot more abilities. I'd probably find myself using the Giga Raptor more than the Spino, so it's gonna win. Then we have the Thyla versus the Astrodelphus. The Thyla, gotta be one of the most fan favorite creatures in the game. I mean, I definitely love this creature. It's really fun, and it's really fast, great travel mount, and has the bleed attack. And then there's the Astrodelphus which I mean is a really great travel mount, is insanely fast with the jetpack saddle, but I think I'm gonna give it to the Thyla just because the Astrodelphus is so late game, you have to have a tech saddle in order to get it. The Thyla, it's on almost all of the maps and is super useful on all of them and it's way easier to get, so I think the Thyla should win. And the last matchup in round two is the Reaper versus the Rex. These are both so similar and so different at the same time, which I guess it's kind of crazy that they also managed to get in the matchup, but the Rex, I mean, I think should win this one. I give my reasons why, mainly because I think it ends up being more useful in most cases. You find it on a lot more maps, which makes it a lot more accessible. It does a lot 
like it's useful for getting meat which i mean i guess the reaper is too but it's also more useful for bosses you can use it for almost every single boss fight in the game which you can't really do that with the reaper i mean i guess you could if you wanted to but it'd be a lot harder because you can't breed reapers either so i think the rex definitely deserves to win we're on to round three we have the maywing versus the magma Sor. The Maywing is definitely one of the best travel mounts in the entire game because of how fast it goes, and I think it should win over that because of the Magmasaur. The Magmasaur is useful for getting metal and stuff, but like I said, there's other options. You don't just have to use the Magmasaur. But I mean, the Maywing is literally, I think, one of the fastest, if not the fastest, maybe right behind the Astrodelphus, or might be even faster than that, so I think it's definitely going to win. Then we have the Desmodus versus the Rhino Natha. These ones are both great flyers and they both have their strong suits. The Desmodus is really fast and has a dive ability. It also has the Sanguine Elixirs, which the Rhino Nathas don't have, but the Rhino Natha is really quick. It can swim underwater. It can pick up vaults and any other types of buildings as well as well as it can pick up large creatures up to the size of a Rex, which I don't even think I've mentioned in this video. And I definitely think the Rhino Natha has more going for it than the Desmodus, and it should win. And then we have the Wyvern versus the Shadow Man. This is a tough one, but I think the winner should be the Wyvern, mainly because this is PvE. And in PvE, I think the Wyvern just has more uses, as you can use it for travel, you can use it for killing stuff while you're out traveling. It's got good weight, good stamina. The Shadow Man is really strong, you can use it for some boss fights and killing stuff, but... I feel like the Wyvern just has more uses in PvE and definitely deserves to win over the Shadow Man. And then we have the Bloodstalker versus the Snow Owl. I do like the Bloodstalker, but I do think the Snow Owl deserves to win here. It just has a lot more. It has the dive ability. It has the ability to freeze things and heal them, which is just super useful. And it has the heat vision as well, which is just a nice little bonus. But I think those abilities that the Snow Owl have make it better than the Bloodstalker, and that's why it's going to win this one. And after that is the Argentavis versus the Card Char. I mean, the Card Char is really great. It's great for killing things and it's good in orbital supply drops and stuff like that. But I mean, the RG just has way more uses, especially in PvE. So it's pretty strong overall with all the weight reductions and stuff it has. I mean, RGs you're using majority of the time you're playing Arc, and I think they're definitely way more useful than a Card Char. So the Argentavis is going to win. Next up, we have the Bronto versus the Rock Drake. This one, I don't think is as close. I definitely think the Rock Drake should win this one. I mean, the Bronto is good. You can get berries and it has high weight, but the Rock Drake is just a phenomenal travel mount. It can go super quick with the glide ability. It also is pretty strong, has some pretty good stats overall, and I think it's better than the Bronto, so it's going to win. And then we have the Strider versus the Gigantoraptor. Both of these have extremely good uses and abilities, but I think the Strider should win this one, mainly because the harvest abilities are just so useful. I mean, obviously you need resources for pretty much everything in the game, and this is the best way to harvest resources by a long shot. Like, there's pretty much no other option once you get the Strider. This is the best thing, so I think it's going to win. And then we have the Thyla versus the Rex. Both of these are awesome creatures that I do love. The Thyla is great with the travel abilities, but I think the Rex wins this one just because I find myself using Rexes a lot more, mainly for stuff like boss fights and stuff. I mean, you don't really need a Thyla. You could definitely survive playing Ark without it, but you can't really survive without a Rex. I mean, you can, I guess, do some other boss strategies, but it's great for even meat runs and stuff. You usually always end up taming a Rex for something useful, so I think it's going to win. Now we're on to round four, and it's getting quite tough. We have the Maywing versus the Rhino. This one's quite hard, as the Maywing is a lot faster. You can go like at the speed of sound with the Maywing, and then there's the Rhino Anatha, which is has so many good abilities and it's pretty quick. But I think the Maywing is going is going to win. At least I think it should win, mainly because I mean, one, it's way faster. It's also way easier to tame. They're just a simple knockout tame, and you can get them super early on, which just makes it a lot more useful. Like Rhino, you can only really use late game, but Maywings, you can get them almost immediately and they will be super useful. Next is a really hard one. We have the Wyvern versus the Snow Owl. Both of these are really good, but I feel like it comes down to personal preference. And I definitely prefer the Wyverns, and there's a few reasons why. First off, the Wyvern, I think, just has a lot more stamina and weight. But it's also mainly just because it's way stronger. It deals a lot more damage, as well as it has the breath attacks. And there's just so many more variants of Wyverns as well. You have the fire, the poison, the lightning, ice, if you want to use that one too, I guess. But 
their wyverns are just great not only are they great for travel and moving resources and all that kind of stuff you could pick up creatures but they're also can defend themselves so the wyvern is going to win this one next up is the argentavis versus the rock drake as much as i like the rock drake and how far it's gotten the argentavis is definitely more useful especially on majority of all the other maps maybe not aberration but you know on all the other maps the argentavis is way better because i mean it can fly and the rock drake can only glide but the argentavis like i said it's got the weight reductions it can actually defend itself it does some decent damage you can pick up creatures it's just one of the best overall and it's not super hard to get either next is the strider and the rex this one is another hard one as the strider i mean it's really great at getting resources but that's pretty much all i end up using it for even though it's the best of the best at resource harvesting a lot of the other abilities it has are pvp oriented which just isn't really useful in pve the rex on the other hand is pretty much essential for boss fighting like i've mentioned it's really strong you can use it for meat runs or just defense of your base or whatever you need I think the Rex should win this one. It's just the better creature in my opinion, so it's gonna win. Now we're on to round five, which is the Rex versus the Argentavis. And I think it's pretty obvious who's winning this one. It's not actually that close of a matchup as the Argentavis is definitely gonna win. It's just so much more useful. Like I've mentioned, Argies, I mean, you usually end up using them 90% of the time. So of course they're gonna end up winning in this PVP E thing because they're just gonna beat it out so yeah the rg beats the rex and then on the other side we have the mailing versus wyvern and once again this is kind of a personal preference one which of course is kind of how the bracket is working out and uh the mailing even though it's insanely fast and kind of easy to get i like the wyvern a bit more because it's got the breath attacks and it can defend itself and it's also just got like higher weight and stuff you can also pick up creatures too and move them, which I do like, but mainly just they're way stronger. You can kill stuff with it as well and defend yourself really well, so the Wyvern wins that one. And finally, we have the Wyvern versus the Argentavis, the last two. Both of these, I think, are really great creatures, especially for PvE, which of course is what the entire break bracket is based on, is PvE gameplay. So we need to decide which one of these is the better one. The Argentavis, of course, I mean, we've gone over it multiple times in this video. It's got really high weight. It's got great stamina. It can give a weight reduction on lots of things, which makes it super useful. It can also hold creatures up to the size of like an Enki, which you can use and it also deals some decent damage. If you need to defend yourself, you can, even though it's not the strongest creature in the world, which comes to its downsides. Another downside it has is it's really, really slow and it can barely move which also kind of sucks also it's not the strongest like i said and then moving on to the wyvern the wyvern has a pretty great amount of weight i find it really useful honestly i don't really have a problem with its weight when i'm going around the same with the stamina but this one's also way faster than the rg as well as it's way stronger it can defend itself and it has the breath attacks you can use the breath attacks to basically just annihilate everything and you won't have a problem with stuff attacking you at all as well as there's just more variation with the wyvern as well you can get the poison the lightning and the fire the ice if you want it to there's all kinds of different wyverns you can get and for those reasons i think i'm going to put the wyvern as beating the rg i think it's a little bit better in my opinion and i would rather have a wyvern so yeah but that is the entire ranking of Ark's best creatures in the bracket. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe. Let me know if you did enjoy this type of video. Because like I said, I've never really done something. I guess I've done similar videos, but not this exactly. So if you guys do like it, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll do more in the future. Or maybe give me some ideas of what other brackets I could do in the future. Probably not ones that are like 64. I might do smaller ones, you know, with like other types of things. But yeah, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching and bye.